If you're listening to this CD, I won't repeat it. It's Proverbs 11.13, Proverbs 18.8, Proverbs 20.19, Proverbs 26.20, and Proverbs 26.22. And if you want to, it would do you good to get that CD. A Study in Church Architecture. And then we talked about how the people that talk about other people in their absence is very common and worthless. But people that edify someone in their presence is rare and priceless. So now today, I had him say to me, lay the foundation. I thought, Lord, I've been pastoring 22 years. Are we still laying the church foundation? Everybody look at me and go, okay. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. Therefore, Jesus said, Whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat on that house, and it fell not, because it was founded on a rock. And everyone that hears these sayings of mine and does them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house. And it fell, and great was the fall of it. We're coming up on the Easter season. And of course, I've been praying about what kind of Easter service to have and what do we want to do. and just Keeping my heart, my spirit man open to hear from the Lord, see what He wants me to do. If anything particular, special He wants me to do or what. And, and I got to thinking. Do your memories speak to you? Do you see things that used to be? Do you remember sweet times in your past? I want to take you back to 1983. I was in a church up here at Highway 5, and it was an Easter Sunday, and that particular, it just seemed to be a time in the late, mid 80s, early 80s, where, well, remember, Jay was a baby, and you were pregnant with Aaron, and it seemed like we needed everything. And we were going through a time when it seemed like money was just running from me. And we had to believe God for every gallon of milk. And we managed to get to church. With, I, I had calculated we'd have enough gas to get home if we went easy going to church. And I remember looking at her holding the baby and, and great with, or soon to be great with child again for number two. And a couple walked in. A man that I know to this day. Gifted, talented. He was a subcontractor. And he had built a two-story home here in Douglasville. And he had three babies. And on that Easter Sunday, they all came in in their Easter best and the girls were dressed so pretty. The little flowery dresses, little full flowery dresses, and they came in dancing their little patent leather looking black shoes. One had little patent leather white shoes, and they were, had little flowers on them and little bows in their hair, and they were, you get the picture? So beautiful. And I saw how he was a subcontractor like I was, but blessing was on him in a way that blessing was not on me at the time, and I was watching and observing. <clears throat> and they came in that Sunday. And all the family sat there together, and then his wife was pregnant with a baby. And they were going to have another little girl. And I observed it. It was so beautiful to behold. And I admired him. And then later, they sold that house, and they built a large large thing 
that when he finished it in the early mid '80s, it was absolutely looked like something in Southern Living magazine. And I'm talking about this boy's subcontractor. Kind of, you know, what a subcontractor is it's, when, it's the kind of job you have. You're unemployed after every job, and you go to go hope you get another one. And he managed to put it. You understand? And I watched him build that thing, landscape it. I watched him buy go karts and little mini bikes and things for his kids, and watch him just watch him be blessed, watch him be so blessed. And then, then they decided that uh, God was calling them to go to Rama Bible Training Center, and so they folded up, rented the house out. Somebody rented that thing. Who ever heard of rent for twelve hundred dollars a month? But somebody rented it. And rented it the whole two years they were gone. And they went to Rama Bible Training Center. He worked there and got work enough to take care of his family. And they put their, themselves in Bible school. Uh, you hear me? Then they had a little boy while they were there. And they had their fifth child. And they were blessed. And then they finally came home. All blessed. And one day, things began to change. He kept good work. But the kids began to have trouble as they were getting older. And the teen girls began to have trouble with who they were associating with. And words, harsh words, began to be spoken between the two of them. Until finally, she, her heart was broken to the point she wound up having an affair. And finally, that house split apart. And then, I remember the oldest girl coming to our house one day and with a cracking voice, talked about how her daddy was now with another woman living in the house. And she said, what bothered me? She said, I, I understand that, that people sometimes can't live together. But what got my attention, what broke my heart was when I saw my dad's new wife's son riding my go-kart. And when she saw her dad's new wife riding her go-kart, she broke. And she began to rebel. See, when parents can't get along, it leaves the children wide open to rebellion. And their attitude is, you're going to tell me what to do? Look at you. Now that's their attitude. Her rebellion went on and on. On and on. And then she met and married the wildest man in four counties. He's in prison right now. In case you ever saw it on Craigslist where you'd find a, a, a home de a, for sale, a Home Depot uh, gift card. We finished out our work and we have materials that we've taken back and put in a gift card. There's $800 worth of material here and you can have it for $400. We just need the cash. And a lot of people bought those gift cards from the man on Craigslist, but he was scamming Home Depot, and they, got, they finally caught up to him. He's in prison. His only thought since he has been a teenager is find some way to stick you and take your goods from you. She married him. <clears throat> One day, the dad, the contract, subcontractor I'm telling you about, a friend of mine that I love, came to me and said, why have my kids become such idiots? And I heard Jim Muncy's voice. Remember Pastor Muncy? I heard his voice inside me. He said, I used to tell people this, John. He said this to me in, in, uh, at Norval School. I used to tell people this, John, and I, I've tried to curb it now. People come to me and say, why are my kids idiots? He's because you are an idiot. He said, I quit saying that. 
when one day a man called me and told me to come get my son out of his yard and stop him from waving that gun around and he says, I'll see about not putting him in jail. He said, when I finally talked him away from the yard and settled him down and took his weapon from him because his girlfriend had left him, he said, I asked the Lord, why did my son do this? And he said, and like a flash of lightning, I remembered him sitting as a little boy in the back seat of the car and a guy backed into me and bumped me. Cause, and he yelled out the window, you're following too close. And I'm thinking, if he won't back into me, I won't be following too close. And then he bumped me again. He said, so I got out of the car. And I walked up there to him. And I stuck my head in his window and was screaming at him. He rolled his window down. I reached in there and I grabbed him by his nostrils and by the back of his... The, scruff of his hair, and had him out the window, waist deep, out the window, yelling at him. Future pastor. He said, my son watched that. And something was sown in him that day. So later, the Lord showed me, this is why he's acting. Pastor, when is this message going to sound good? <laughs> well, I just got to preach where we are. I mean, I could preach, you know, spiritual epithets and really sweet, nice things, quote a couple of scriptures, read a poem, a prose, make a little spin on words and say hallelujah, and kiss you and goodbye. Or I could tell you where we really live. Because we're all human beings. And we deal with things. We're people. Like I said, you got a lasso that steer down called your flesh and your emotions and stay on top of it. Or it'll come up and bite you. Sure. Later on, that, that old boy, divorced, he, they were divorced and they had remarried. And the guy I'm telling you about. The kids have tried to make some semblance he said, I don't understand, Pastor John. We learned in Rhema that, that we're the righteousness of God by faith in Christ Jesus. I, he's, and I know my daughter knows that and she's over there in prison right now. I said, God is using the righteousness of God to preach to other inmates right now. And the righteousness of God in, by faith in Christ Jesus can still rob a store and get locked up. Is this a revelation? Hey, a sinner that won't rob a bank won't go to prison, but a Christian that will, will. <laughs> it's amazing how we have to be taught these things. I said, what happened to you? To you? What happened? He said, I don't know. We got home. We knew we were supposed to watch our confession. And I let things slip that didn't need to be said. and We'd get in arguments that didn't need to be. He said, over the stupidest thing. We never argued over anything worth anything. We argued over things that didn't mean nothing. And the kids would run. Hide in their bedrooms. And I couldn't help but think back on those days when he'd come to church on Easter and the kids were dressed so pretty. Write this in your notes. God Almighty is a family man. He invented family. <clears throat> Brother Norville told me one time, he said, the Lord took him to heaven. He said, I went up, he said, Brother John, I went up, you can believe this if you want to or not. He said, I went up through the roof. He said, I could see the rafters in the roof of the house when I went up through it. I went up through the ceiling, went up through the roof. Got out, he said, I feel the wind blowing across me. Went up, through past the trees, could feel the, the, the brushing of the pine trees brushing by my arms as I went past over the top of the pine trees. He said, as I got up over the trees, he said, the wind was blowing. He said, and I could see the clouds coming. It was at night, and I broke past the clouds and, and saw the stars and went on past the stars and went up into heaven. He said, he said I was shaking. Just being near that place, I was just shaking. 
He said, then I had the sense of peace. He said, I went into heaven and saw houses. And I toured a house. He said, there was a house that had 40 or 50 chairs all the way around a dining room table. I'd never seen a dining room table like that in my life. He said, I had a revelation. The Lord builds houses. You'll live in houses with lots of chairs around the table because God's a family man. And He brings families together. And the devil hates your family. He'll do everything to tear it apart. And he'll sow the seed of that destruction in your family right out your own mouth. We best learn to keep our mouths shut We've said things to where it's just a little cliche. You know, if you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all. It is true, but we make it sound like it's a little nursery rhyme. Uh, you could have never told me then that that family would be torn apart like it was and the kids confused and destroyed. And God will rebuild. He'll, as soon as you're breaking something down and you're laying a sledgehammer against the foundation of what He's built in you and the, and the more you beat it down, He'll be trying to shore it up and put new mortar in it. That's the way He does. He's constantly trying to fix what we are breaking and tearing down. That's just Him. He is a fixer. And we think just because He fixes it all the time, we can just go ahead and break. Listen, don't make God try to fix everything all the time. Just don't break it. Well, that's a revelation. Just leave it fixed. And then I saw with my eyes churches with pastors whose kids had the same problems. And we referenced one pastor. God love him. Gone on to heaven now. Oh, I picked up the phone the other day. He's going to call that pastor the other day. Had the phone in in my hand, and I, I can't call him. I said, God, tell him something for me. <laughs> and I saw pastors with their families falling apart. Men that could preach. Men that could lay hands on the sick. Men that even knew how to cast out devils. And their families, their kids were falling apart. I said, God, I don't want that. <clears throat> and here I got the call of God on my life, and I'm looking at my boys coming along. I remember one day we were in our house there in Lithia Springs, and I had a little boom box we got for Christmas and put it up on the shelf. We had these big four foot wide by eight foot tall shelves on each side of our fireplace. And on one of the shelves was this big boom box and I'd play an old Statler Brothers tape. It was the, the Holy Bible, Old and New Testaments. It's a good tape. I love four-part harmony anyway. And there was this song I'd play, and I'd watch the boys take off running around the table, around the table, around the table. That was the way they celebrated the song. They were just little fellas. I still remember Aaron Luke. I'd hit the button. There are people who are whispering and the rumors are running wild. There's a woman who's not married, but she's gonna have a child. Her name is Mary. She's a virgin from down in Nazareth. Now listen close. She's going to marry a man named Joseph, but the baby's father is the Holy Ghost. My God, that song would play, and the Holy Ghost would sweep our house, and the boys would run around the table, and they'd run around, run. They'd run. You remember those? They'd run around, run around. See, this has been a while ago. It might be past his memory. I'd watch him play, and I'd watch him. They'd be in there. Who do you think 
could believe such a thing, could believe that the story is true. Who do you think should believe such a thing? Where he, well, here's hoping to heaven you do. They'd play it, and they'd, they'd run and play And I'd watch them. I'd have somebody over say, y'all watch this, watch. One time Vicky was over, my sister Vicky, I said, I'd hit that button and that song play, and they'd talk, take off running, and she'd laugh. I'd watch her laugh and cry at the same time. Do you know how easy we could have been a statistic like I just outlined for you? It's not because I've got all these spiritual brains and I know what I'm doing. I've been flying by the seat of my pants for 35 years in marriage and 40 years since I've been born again. What did Jesus say here? The rain's going to descend. The, the flood is going to come. The winds are going to blow. And it's going to beat on your house. And the, the house is founded on a rock and the house is founded on sand. It's going to have the same storms. Storms come to everyone. I was watching this thing last night on Channel 8 about the storms of Joplin, Missouri in 2011. Remember that? <clears throat> I remember that day. I was in the truck with my nephew Shannon, and we pulled over on Highway 5 on I-20, and he said to me, he said, uh, you know, Glenn Burns said something today. He said, we, we judge atmospheric pressure and the possibility of tornadoes in one, two, and three. Three being off the chart for tornadic uh, possibility. He said, we've reached two twice in ten years. Today, we are estimating number eleven. That day, the storms came through and blew I mean, it destroyed Ringgold, Georgia. How many of y'all know of people in Alabama that got just absolutely devastated? That Talip was it Tal Tuscaloosa? What <clears throat> Jop Joplin, Missouri was destroyed. My God, those storms came, and I mean, it destroyed. How that that special was on last night. I was watching that. <clears throat> Rome, Georgia, same year. Storms that just come along and destroy houses, destroy homes, come. Spiritually, they do. And Jesus said, He that hears these sayings of mine and does them, I'll show you to whom he's like. He's like unto a wise man that dig deep until he laid his house, built his foundation on a rock and built his house. And when the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house, the rain descended. It could not fall because it was founded. It was solid on a rock. <clears throat> you know what the most... You're, you're a songwriter. How many songs have you written in your life? Over 3,000. That's, that's Solomonic numbers. Solomon wrote 1,005 songs and no tell how many Proverbs. You know what the most re-recorded song is in history? I mean, any number of artists have rewritten it. Yesterday, all my troubles seem so far away. Now it looks as though they're here to stay. Oh, I believe in yesterday. People regret where they are because they want to be where they used to be. And I'm telling you this, y'all, very simple. Yesterday can come to right today and stay today instead of being those, that family that had the little girls that were all pretty as a peach and beautiful. And I didn't know that they had a terrible future in front of them where they were going to be destroyed and they were going to wind up in prison and messed up. I'd have never thought it. I'd have never thought it. Ever. I thought they were precious. I thought they were excellent. I thought they had it figured out. But they went to letting their mouths run, saying anything they wanted to say, do it, saying anything. And God, God uprooted them, sent them to the place where they're taught from the cauldron of watch your confession.
some years ago, we were still living in Lithia Springs, and I came across an old church directory, a pictorial directory that we'd taken and had in 1995, 1985. <laughs> I flipped through it to see what we used to look like. And we used to look different. I did. And the boys were real little. Now, Jamie, look just like that right there. I started flipping pages. And memories of these families that I knew and loved. Memories. Memories. And how many memories are statistics of destruction. And they did, if you'd have handed us a crystal ball in 1983, 84, and 85, and showed us, if somebody had come along and said, you, come up here, this is your future, we'd have told him he was a false prophet and a liar. We'd have stoned him and ran him out of town. And I thought, I thought, that because we were having some success in spiritual things, we'd have a lot of money, but we'd come home every night and we had some success. And I mean, we were getting, at the same time, hammered by people because the church we were in had raised up a school, a Christian school. And everybody who was somebody put their kids in that Christian school. Well, we didn't have $140 a month for each child. Are you kidding? We're trying, to, we're trying to find enough money just to make the house payment. Are you kidding? It seemed like the house payment was always paid and boom, then it would be due. And sometimes it would be get on out there towards that grace period and oh, we'd scrape it together and get it paid before that $100 fee was added to it. My God. I mean, you know where you're in a sprint and your bill's right here on your shoulder? But it's easier to see your bills when they're out here in front of you when you're running wide open. That's where we were most of the time. And so it wasn't because we didn't want to put our kids in Christian school. It wasn't because we didn't want to put our kids in private school. It's because the state had a good school right down here we could put them in, and it was free. And, and our well-meaning, loved-us Christian kinfolk in our church would say to us, oh, that's right, just send them on down there to Sodom and Gomorrah. Just tell them don't act like they do. So we felt condemned. Especially when the state-funded red, uh, yellow school bus folded open its doors and Jay walked off in and folded him up and took him off up the street without us. Suddenly, we felt like we were putting him on a paddy wagon and sending him to prison down there where all the sodomites lived. That's what we were taught. And everybody else was doing it right. And we were doing it wrong. Come to find out, Cecilia Strasner, God love her heart to this day, wherever she's at. Spirit-filled, tongue-talking, principal of the... Elementary school prayed over those kids in tongues, and Miss Nunley was a Christian. And we got to think, find out, you know, the school wasn't as bad as all our Christian kin folks said it was. And they loved our kids, and our kids loved them. And Miss Brooksy Smith, remember her? That loved Aaron Luke. And she's still there? Brooksy Smith, God love you, honey. I hope you watch this on YouTube, but I still see your sweet face. I remember Aaron and Luke, little fella, coming during the spring break. Spring break was gone for a whole week. You know, for a kid, spring break is forever. For us, it's just a week. And that first Monday morning, they're excited about going back to school. And Aaron and Luke's telling me, Dad, I hadn't got to see Miss Smith in a long time, hadn't I, Daddy? I hadn't got to see Miss Smith in a long time, hadn't I, Daddy? And I said, Yeah, you hadn't got to see Miss Smith in a long time. Uh, he said, I'm going to tell Miss Smith about what I did all this while I was gone out of school. And, and I said, and I, it hit me, this flutter in my belly, flutter in my belly. I thought, he's not talking to me about Chucky or Brian or his other buddies. So I went in the house right quick, and I ripped off this quick note. Dear Miss Smith, this morning while the kids were getting ready to go to school, they'd been gone on spring break all week long, and all Aaron Luke kept saying to me was, 
I hadn't got to see Miss Smith in a long time, hadn't I, Daddy? And I said, after a week of Nintendo games, it's a wonderful thing to know that your kids don't want to see Chucky or Brian or all their friends. Their heart yearns to see Miss Smith. What a blessing. I sent that letter folded up in his backpack. She opened it up, busted out crying, got a, a copy of it made, laminated it, kept it, and sent us a note. I've always loved Miss Smith because she loved my son. You love the people who love your kids. And so all my children went to secular elementary schools with the rest of the sodomites. And then they went to the secular middle schools with all the maturing sodomites. And then they went to the secular high school with Sodom and Gomorrah horns coming out of their head. Ites. And then they chose secular colleges. And they were trained in the higher learning of sin, hell, sex, and hate. And all of our Christian counterparts Over 75% of them, their kids crashed and burned. Drug rehab. Some got killed. I am not saying I did it right and you did it wrong. I'm saying there has to be something more than just where you put yourself socially. Perhaps it's maybe what you say at home. And it wasn't because we were so lily white with our words at home either, was it, Mama? I mean, we'd go ahead and tell each other exactly what we thought. But we lo- Shh, don't tell everybody that. But we loved each other. And we loved them. And they loved each other. And Janie wouldn't let them fight. If they tried to fight, uh-uh, uh-uh, we don't do, uh-uh. We don't do strife in here. You hug him, tell him you're sorry. You'll mean it one day. Tell him you're sorry. And now they're adults, and they love each other. If they need to say they're sorry, they do. They practiced it. They know. What I'm saying is we started a church in 1994, and I thought that because we had been successful so far raising kids, that people might would come and want to learn how to raise kids. And I found out they don't. They want to preach religious epithets and correct everybody's confession. But when they go home, they don't really want to know what it takes to raise a family that when they're... You have to raise a a responsible adult before he becomes an adult. Otherwise, he'll be an adult idiot. And I'll tell you, he that begets a wise son will have joy of him. But a foolish son will be the... bring his mother to shame and be a rottenness in his bones. You listen to me. Very simple. Very simple. And we'll close up right here. Find out what Jesus had to say and do it. Do I have any cooks in here? Anybody that bakes bakery? Okay. You bake pies, cakes? Anybody bakes cakes? Janie don't bake no cakes um, from no box. I don't know what she does. She just don't do that much. But one day we had something. I don't know who brought it. I was looking at this Pillsbury cake box. And I looked at the back of it, and it said ingredients. I'm reading the ingredients, and I'm reading the ingredients, and I'm looking at it. It's telling you what to do it and how to preheat your oven and, and what you mix together with what and make something sit for a while. And then you make this, what you make egg whites, and you whip that up, and then you, if, you, if you whip it up fast enough, it'll turn into like a foam, and you can put that up on top of the cake. And I'm looking at all this stuff, I'm reading all this, and it hit me. Like a revelation. There are people I have known that are confessing, 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 confessing the Word and never acting on a thing Jesus said. Never do one thing He said. And that's why they just become a confession police that sounds like they're the, just the hall monitor of every other Christian that they know, but they themselves, their lives are falling apart because they're never doing anything Jesus said to do. Pastor, how'd you get that on the back of a Pillsbury uh, 
cake box. I got it like this. I could stand there and read, you know, uh, three eggs, one quart of one quarter teaspoon of salt. I could read all this, and I could say it and say it and say it and say it and say it. But if I don't go in there and act on what Pillsbury said to do, I ain't gonna get no cake. I got to do what it says to do, and then I'll get a cake. Preheat the oven. No, I'm just going to confess that oven's going to get hot. The 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 oven's going to get hot. You're not saying the oven's getting hot. You should put your children in Christian school. The oven's going to get hot. The oven's going to get hot. The oven's going to get hot. No, we just went to doing what Jesus said to do. That's all. That's all we did. That's all we did. And we didn't half do that, but just a little bit, most of the time. Somebody give me a Kleenex before I blow my nose on you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Maybe I'll just confess that my nose won't run. <sighs> I believe in confession. And I believe your words will come to pass. I believe you best. We all best. And I'm questioning myself right now. What is it that Jesus is telling me to do that I hadn't done lately? I know this is what he said. He said, if you love the Father. He said, whoever loves me, him my Father will love. Whoever loves me, him my Father will love. Whoever loves me, Jesus said, him my Father will love. And we'll come together and we will, our father, my Father and I will come and take up our abode with him. The only thing I can tell y'all folks is Jesus came and abode with us. He came and lived in our house with us. With all of my lack of knowledge, with all of my stupidity, with all of my weaknesses and inabilities that blare in my face, but all that, that I didn't know what to do, and all of my apathy and all of my unwillingness to do, all of my lazinesses and all of my troubles as a personal human being, He came and abode with us. And now we go to bed every night and not a one of our Kids or our life's issues are bothering us. We've not been left. We've not been laid awake all night long worrying about something in years. God, give me that and not a million dollars. Give me that. Like a man said to me one time, if all your problems can be solved with a big bunch of money, you don't have any problems. <clears throat> You know what he's done for you. You know how good he's been to you. With all of our troubles, he's been good to us, hasn't he? I like your email still. I still, when I see your email, I see that on the bottom. I am proof that God's grace is sufficient. I'm living proof, is what it says. I like it every time I get an email from you. Well, I'm going to say this to you. As your pastor, as your shepherd, the grace that's been on me yes. is on you. Yes. Every good thing He's ever done for me comes to you. Every future blessing. If I were to hold a crystal ball in front of you, you'd see straight through it to a bright future and blessing and victory. And all the shame of your youth will be washed away. No more memory of past wrongs or troubles. <clears throat> but I see a bright, 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 bright future. I got to thinking about a song. When I was a kid, the Glenn Campbell Good Time Hour. Remember him? He had a fellow on by the name of Bob Lumen. And uh, I remember him. I remember hearing the song on the, on, on the radio. I'll say this to you. Seeds are the foundation of a great harvest. James 3 tells you clearly that the words of a man's mouth set on fire the course of nature. Natural things are affected by the words of a man's mouth. You know it's true. No one can choose whether or not he lives by his words, but he has the choice of what words he lives by. 
Romans chapter 10 and verse 6 says, The righteousness which is of faith speaks. Righteousness speaks. Righteousness speaks. It comes out your mouth. We've been given divine authority to speak God's Word in His name. Ephesians 4 and verse 29 says, Let no corrupt communications proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace to the hearers. Watch, watch, watch what comes out your mouth. Listen, and repent of the wrong quickly. God's Word in righteousness, spoken, brings angelic visitation. Put up the 103rd Psalm, the 20th verse. Psalm 103 and verse 20. I've had people dispute me about this over the years. I don't know why. <clears throat> but if the Scripture says clearly that angels are sent to be your servant. Angels are the servants for the saints. They do. They'll serve you. They'll do the things you can't do. Bless the Lord, you His angels that excel in strength, that do His commandments, hearkening to the voice of His Word. Yes, if God Almighty on the throne decides to say something, they will do what He says. But the voice of His Word comes right out your mouth too. And they'll hearken to that voice. And they'll do according to what's coming out of your mouth. Did you know though that curses bring demonic activity? We talked about this last week. I told you about the man who shot and killed himself because he got in a fight with his grandson. And the scripture says where bitter envying and strife is, there's confusion. The atmosphere of confusion exists and there's every evil work. And one of the evil works took place that day and he killed himself. And I did the funeral. And I told them the reason why he was dead. Because he got in a fight. The argument's what caused him to kill himself. Had there been no argument that day, no doubt he would not have killed himself that day. This is how serious words spoken can cause problems. I like it what second, uh, James 3.16, put that, put that up right quick, and put 2 Timothy 4.18 on the board. James 3.16, we're about to close up, it's quarter to twelve, and we might get out here a little bit early. Probably. <laughs> James 3.16 2 Timothy 4.18. I like these two scriptures. They're side by side. <clears throat> Where ending and strife is, there is... And... See, it's, it's unaffordable. It's totally unaffordable. to You can't even abide strife even for five seconds because every evil work always shows up. Who do you think brings the evil works? It's demonic activity. If angels hearken unto the voice of God's Word, demons hearken unto the voice of strife. Now... Look at 2 Timothy 4.18. And the Lord will deliver me from every evil work <laughs> and preserve me. Yes. Obviously, it is, this is not, as they say, not rocket science. It's not, it is brain surgery, but it's not rocket science. <laughs> the Lord will deliver me from every evil work and preserve me unto His heavenly kingdom to whom be, whom be glory forever. How is He going to deliver me from every evil work? If, if strife comes, brings every evil work, then how's He going to deliver me from every evil work? He's going to keep me out of strife, praise the Lord. And oh, somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. <clears throat> Question. Question. Everybody go. Did the words I just speak bring angels or demons? Well, then let's start saying that to one another. Did the word you just say to me bring an angel or a demon? <laughs> Boy, that'll put you doing something at home. Are you, uh, very simple. Uh, did, <clears throat> did, did what you just say bring angels or demons? I was about 11 years old and I thought about this song. You old country artists will remember this. I don't remember the I don't remember how the verses went, but I just remembered the, the chorus. Because when I heard him sing it, it gave me a little flutter in my belly and a good feeling. I'd, and I thought it was just the song giving me a good feeling. No, it was something spiritual that's taking place in me. He was sowing seeds inside me back then to prepare me for today. This was a song by a man that you don't even hear of anymore. His name was Bob Lumen. Remember him? 
Bob Lumen. In every other song that I've heard lately, some fella gets shot and his baby and his best friend both die with him. As likely as not, in half of the other songs, some cats crying or ready to die. We've lost most of our happy people and I'm wondering why. Let's talk about living. Let's talk about loving. Let's talk about whooping and a hopping and a bopping and a little lovey dovin. Let's forget about whining and crying and the shooting and the dying and the fellow with the switchblade knife. Let's talk about living. Let's talk about life. Let's talk about living. Let's talk about life. We lost old Marty Robbins down in old El Paso a little while back. And now Miss Patty Page, or one of them, is a wearing black. And Kathy's clown has Don and Phil where they feel like they could die. And if we keep on losing our singers like that, I'll be the only one you can buy. Let's talk about living. Let's talk about loving. I bet if they talked about living and talked about loving and talked about living and talked about loving and talked about living and talked about loving, their kids wouldn't have been in prison. What do you think? What do you think? For sure. No doubt about it. It's worth whatever you have to do to shut down the strife. It's worth it. Oh, we strike a little match today. And don't worry about the forest fire. Because it's not a forest fire today. It'll be one later. Thank you for joining us today for the Word Wise Christian broadcast from Church on the Word. <laughs> Remember, God sent us this word right here. Lap full of Bible to get our thinking straightened out. When his mindset becomes our own, peace settles in. Our confession and believing gets straightened out. That's when we get straightened out because our life has become word-wise. God bless you. See you next week. <clears throat>